Okay, so now let's look at what happens during pass by reference using an, uh, an example where we'll show the code and a diagram side by side. Uh, so the diagram is similar to ones that we've looked at in previous lessons where uh, what we're doing is we're showing you both the reference variable me and then the object that it refers to, uh, which in this case is a person, which I've created with the age of, of 39. And what we're showing here is how the object, um, sort of how the object references change as we call a function that accepts a person as a parameter. And so what really happens here is when I call birthday, so you see I'm calling birthday, uh, that's the first part of this that's gonna be evaluated before Java tries to print anything. So it starts trying to print, it's like, oh, I have to evaluate birthday first. So I call birthday, I'm passing me, parameter. During the function, what happens is the method receives a copy of the reference. So I copy the reference from you know, me into this variable to set. And then during the method, you can think that there actually are two references to that object. One that's still being held by the method caller, um, which is called me, and the second that's being used by the method itself, which it has a parameter that's named to set. Because the method receives a copy of the reference, it has access to that same object. And so any changes that it makes to the object are visible to the call. So in this case, what happens is I call birthday, I jump into the birthday function. So when I start executing this line of code, I call birthday, I pass me, I jump into the birthday method um, to set gets a copy of the reference that is stored in the variable me. Um, it uses that reference, it follows that reference here using dot notation to access the age, which again, I've set up as a public field just to keep this short, um, and it increments the age. And then it returns to set.age, and what would happen here is you'd see uh, 40 printed. Um, and um, what would also happen is that if I print me.age, um, that would also print 40. So after the method completes, now I still have this reference me to the same person object I created on line 11, and I can use that to retrieve the new age, which has been modified by that method. So again, when I pass an object to a method, um, what happens is the method receives a copy of the object reference that's passed to it that it uses as it runs. Because that reference refers to the same object, any changes that I make to the object, in this case, increase in the age, are visible to the caller of the method once the method call completes. So once I get back to line 13 and I'm actually retrieving the age, you'll see that um, you, you would see this return 40. So again, sort of like quick example, let's go back uh, through and kind of walk it through again. Um, so at this point, I have a reference variable named me that have a reference, has a reference to person a person object that I created on line 11. When I, as the birthday method runs, so at this point I'm calling birthday, so I jump into the birthday method and I continue executing until I reach a return statement. So the first thing the birthday method does is it uses that reference, it follows it to access the age variable, which is available because I marked it as public, and it increments it. And then it returns that as an age. The return isn't as important here as what happens next, which is once the function stops running, I have one reference left to that person object that I created, and I can use that reference to verify that the age, in fact, has been increased.